Today's reading is Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 9, an invitation to abundant life. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. May God bless our understanding. I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. As soon as I read this text, I immediately uh, was brought back to one of our mission trips that we had taken quite a while ago. Um, the kids that were on that trip are now, I think they're actually graduated from college already. Um, but at that time, we had gone to one of the southern states. It was after one of the hurricanes. And it, it was a particularly humid week in the south. And we're from the north. We're not really used to that, right? So we kept telling the kids, we want you to take lots of breaks and drink water. And uh, there was one who <laughs> insisted that he didn't need water and he was just gonna keep on working, right? And uh, so one day I noticed um, lots of sweat building up on his shirt, his shirt was wet, wasn't taking breaks. I'd kind of get all the kids and most of the kids would go and take their breaks, but this one wouldn't. And uh, so finally it got later in the day and you just kind of start to see signs in people. Skin tone looks a little different. It maybe become a little bit irritable. So I finally said, okay, come on, you gotta go take a break. Come, come sit with me over here in the shade and we're gonna have some water. Well, no, I don't need any. I said, well, that's okay, you're gonna come with me anyway. We're gonna go sit over here in the shade, we're gonna have some water. Well, no, I don't need to. I said, you need to drink some water and you're gonna come with me. Continued to argue with me and said, you don't know, you're not in my body. You don't know what I need. You can't tell me what I need, I don't need this. I said, you're right, I don't. But you're gonna come now and you're gonna sit with me in the shade and we're gonna have some water. Finally did, luckily, because I was like, okay, how am I gonna get this to happen? Um, finally did, and we were able to have a nice talk later when he realized, oh yeah, maybe I was a little dehydrated and shouldn't really have talked to Kim that way, but um, we had a good talk, so it, it ended up well. But interesting to me how sometimes something so simple as water that we need, and we're sweating, and we know that like we're losing water, but we're not taking it in, and we still resist that. Not just water, but other things in life that we need and we resist it. How often do we, we know we probably need to take a nap. Oh, but no, I really gotta do this and this and this first. Especially kids, right? Oh, they resist naps and they need it. There's so many things that we resist in life, yet we know we need it. And this text speaks directly to that. We don't always know that we need something, but we do. And Isaiah's speaking to that. In the Grand Canyon, there's actually signs that say, drink water. Even if you think you don't need it, drink water. And that's Isaiah today. How, how is it that we don't recognize our own thirst? How is it that we need a prophet to say to us, you're thirsty, you need to come, you need to have this. Isaiah actually pleads with us, you are thirsty, come and drink. There's free water, come and get it, you need it, you're thirsty. And what Isaiah goes further to tell us is that 
We need to respond to this call to come to the waters and drink of God's goodness. It might not be what we think we need, but we do, we need it. He's telling us something about ourselves, something we might not know, something we might not like to hear. Well, you don't know me, you don't know what I need. Isaiah's saying, no, you need this. Come, come to the waters and drink. So imagine a market where everything you need is free. Big, huge supermarket. Everything is free. There's free water, there's free food, there's free medication, there's free clothing, there's free shelter. What else do we need? There's free education. Think of that market. All you have to do is go there. All you have to do is walk in and you're going to get what you need. Your smile does it. You don't need money in your pocket. You just need to walk in there and take it. We spend lots of money on things that we don't necessarily need, right? All of us, uh, we get to the spring and we're like, I need to start sorting through this. And we open our closets and we think, well, why do I even have this? Why do I keep this? Why do we hold on to things? Why do we have so much stuff when we don't really need it? That's the product of the world around us, isn't it? There's a lot of things that are competing for our time and our attention. Lots of places to go, lots of things to get, lots of new things to get all the time, the up and coming new stuff. And even if we don't need it, we're pretty good at convincing ourselves that we do. Well, I don't really need another computer. I have two. I don't need another one. Oh, but this new one, look what it can do. The technology of this is amazing. Look at the deal they're giving me, $50 off this week. And then we get that computer, right? We didn't really need it, but we convince ourselves that we do. Isaiah is working here to convince us that there's something else we need in life, in our daily life, that we really should except even when we think we're fine, even when we think we're, we're doing great. Because really, all this other stuff, Isaiah says, all this other stuff in the world really leads to your death. It doesn't lead to your salvation. It doesn't lead to wholeness and goodness. There's this movie, it's, it's old, I, I think it's, um, maybe it's only 24, no, I think it's 2004, but it's a British film. It's called Millions. It's one of those movies that I think should have gotten a lot more press because it's pretty good. Um, and, and not a lot of people have, have watched it. It's called Millions, and it's about these two boys, and their mother has died, and they're living with their dad, um, Anthony and Damien. And Damien is quite religious. They grew up in a Catholic, go to a Catholic school, and that's part of the story. And Damien's quite religious, and he like is in love with saints. He's obsessed with saints, and he knows all these things about saints. He knows what they're named for. He knows when they lived. He knows when they died. He knows when they were canonized. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty cute to watch this. Um, and so, and, and Anthony, of course, isn't so into that, and he's off doing his own stuff all the time. Well, Damien, of course, is in his own little world because not a lot of people care about his information about saints. So he has these boxes and he hangs out in these cardboard boxes. Well, one of them is by a train track. And at one time, there's these thieves that steal money. I think it's during the time when the euro was changing. It was changing over to the euro, so the, the money wasn't going to be worth. They had to spend what, what. The robbers steal the money. And their plan is they're going to be on this train, and they're being tracked, so they're going to throw it off the train, and then somebody goes and picks it up for them, right? Like people that are part of this, this hoist. And uh, so they throw it off the tracks, and they throw it at this little thing of boxes. And of course, it's Damien's hideout. So he comes upon this money. He's actually there. He's communicating with his saints, and he, and he finds this money, and he thinks, oh my gosh, God sent this to me. This must be from God, right? So Damien's on the right track. He gets this, and he finds his brother. And Anthony, look what I found. And Anthony, of course, is like, oh my gosh, look what we can get. And they get these cell phones, the little flip phones, and they're trying to communicate with that. And he's trying to use it to buy friends and get into a dance and do all this crazy stuff. And of course, the dad finally finds out. And then the dad's finding ways that, well, how can we better our life? Because our life has been hard after mom died. And how can we use this to better our life? So they're all going there. They're doing that. Well, Damien decides that, you know, I think there's something else. God gave me this money to do good with in the world. And, and so he's trying to find all these different ways to help people with the money. It's pretty phenomenal um, to, see, to see all this play out. So the family is running about trying to spend all this to make their lives better. And Damien's trying to find, well, who needs money? And he, he tries to talk to different people. Well, well, do you need money? And do you need money? And where do you live? And what do you have? And, and uh, it's neat to see that. But God really gets lost in the shuffle. Damien struggles with everybody else around him wanting to spend this on things that really aren't of God, right? And so uh, God gets lost in the shuffle. And it's like Isaiah reminding us 
through this story and, and through our lives and all the different things that are going on, that a relationship with God is both our greatest need and our richest fulfillment. This Damien kid understands that. There's a bigger need than these cool little cell phones. There's a bigger need than giving money so you can be the popular kid on the playground. There's a bigger need and richer fulfillment if, if we can find ways to spend it in the world. And his biggest dream, Damien's biggest dream, is to provide water wells in Africa because he hears the story of Africans not having any water. And finally, at the end, this dream comes true, and they, they, uh, his dream is that they take a rocket to Africa, but obviously they don't take a rocket, and they get these water wells, and at the end, there's this image of everybody dancing, and the family's part of that. So the Africans who all of a sudden have what they need, they're dancing, they're celebrating, how wonderful is this water? How great is this gonna make our lives? How enriching and fulfilling are we gonna be now? And the family is too. Once a family realizes that all these other things that are competing for their time and attention and all these other things that they think makes them feel good and better and fulfilled isn't really it, but they see, wow, helping one another, making sure that we all have the basic necessities of life that are in this free supermarket that God is providing us. This is what gives me life. This is what makes me happy. This is, even after my mother has died, even after my wife has died, this is what's going to make me be a better father and do good in the world. The dad understands that now. That's what Isaiah is trying to get across to us. The ways of God, the goodness of God, the ability to share with one another, to be kind and gracious, to put aside our own prejudices and, and, and learn to love each other even when we're different, even when we don't agree, to be kind and outreaching and to share and to make sure that everybody has what they truly need in life. And for us to have those times, those moments in our day where we stop and we think and we reflect and what is God calling me today? What is God asking of me? Those are the things that bring forth life for all people. Not just for ourselves. Even when we take that time to pray during the day and just reflect and what are the things I'm doing? And are these things leading me to fulfillment? Are these things leading me to a closer relationship with God? That helps us, but it also helps each other because we become better neighbors. We become better partners on this journey of life together. When we can stop long enough to say, God, which way am I going? And which way is really leading to fulfillment, is really leading to you? Which is really giving me that water that I need to drink to be alive in your world today? As we enter this third week of Lent, let us truly consider how we take time during our week to see which direction we're really going, to see all the different things that are calling at us and pulling at us, and stop long enough to say, God, where do you need me? I guarantee you we'll hear an answer if we take the time to listen. Amen.